this time I'm going to create a new parameter I'm going to insert a side rail so it's the length minus 2 times 40 minus Two times forty again. This formula represents that the rail must be the same length as the top minus the space from the leg to the end minus the space of the legs. As before, you have to use an underscore to create the name in Excel. The reason I included the side rail length um, is for two reasons. First of all, I want to show the usage of the formulas in Excel for creating parametric drawings. And secondly, I want to show the actual more common way of creating the, the rail itself. Just update the drawing. I'm going to sketch. Edit the sketch. And turn the drawing around. I'm going to drag the rail wide because I don't want it to snap to any other uh, location. So simply select the width, pick it from the parameters list, and OK. Now, as I go to do the length of the rail itself, I'm also going to select the parameter. I'll show a different version of doing the same function in two minutes time. I can now mirror the long rail across the center line. Both long rails are now complete. Now we need to insert uh, rail length for the short for the short rail. Just going to copy the name, edit it slightly, and insert a new formula. So this time it's the width minus twice the leg from the end. minus twice the leg size. I can now save this again and return to the inventory drawing. Now I can apply my dimension and this will extend as far as the next leg. I just need to turn my sketch back on here again. Click the end, click the beginning, and insert the dimension. As I said previously, this is not the most common way of drawing the rail itself. Usually it would be more common to snap to the other leg, but I just drew it this way just to illustrate the use of the formulas. I will now carry out the end rail on the other side of the table using the normal method. So first you click the corner, click to the other leg, don't snap to anything, dimension, 
due to the fact that the first corner of this rectangle was clicked on the corner of the leg it is now um, snapped to that section and cannot move so the inside of the rail will move out as opposed to the outside of the rail move in click the dimension and click accept this particular rail now actually has one physical dimension less but is still snapped to the two legs so it is fully constrained I can now finish the sketch now I'm going to select my work planes I'm going to turn on the work plane on the bottom of the top that's the location that the top of the rail will be at. I'm now going to put in uh, parameters for the side rail itself. I forgot to put in the height earlier on, so that's 100 millimeters. Update my parameters. Click model, plane, click, and drag. This time, once again, since it's gone downwards, I must enter a negative value. The two planes now represent the top and bottom of the side rails. So now I'm going to select the side rails themselves. From and two, click the two planes, and OK. I can now turn off the visibility of my work planes as I no longer need them. I can also turn off the visibility of my sketch. The table now is fully parametrically constrained. I can now return to the Excel sheet and change any parameters I require. The next minute or so will just demonstrate the different parameters I've used in this table.